Hello grade ones! I'm back with Teach Me Teddy and we're going to be talking about some of the work you're going to see on page 112 and 113 in your Jump Math book. And today you're going to be working a little bit with subtraction. We've been doing some adding, so we know that subtracting is doing the opposite of adding. We're going to be counting backwards to get our answer for subtraction. That's how we've been practicing it. But today I'm going to show you how to actually count forward when you're doing subtraction and get the same answer. So I'm just going to remind you about how a subtraction sentence is made. Whenever we're writing a subtraction sentence, we always start with a total. So that's your big number. Always starting with your big number and then taking away a part, which is a smaller number, which will equal what's left over, which is your other part. So if we have five counters, so I'm going to use my number line to show you I have five and we're taking away two, I know that because of that subtraction sign, I'm not, I'm going to be jumping backwards on my number line. So this is saying to jump back two. So I'm going to jump back one and two, and that means that I now have three. So I had five, I took away two, and now I have three. All right, now in subtraction that you're going to see today, you're going to see sometimes the part at the end is missing, but sometimes they're going to show you the part in the question that's missing. And then that would be your missing part right here. So if I have five, how many do I need to take away to have three left over? So I'm going to put start at five and I'm going to start taking away until I see three. So that means take away one, take away two. I have to take away two to make three. I'm going to show you now how we can use counting forward instead of counting backwards. So usually students find it easier to count up than count down. So if I was going to use my fingers for this, I would go five and then take away four. Take away two would be five, four, three, and I'd be counting backwards. I can also get the answer three by punching out on two and counting up to my total. Two, three, four, five. And I still get the answer three, but this time I don't have to count backwards. I can actually count forwards. So in this one as well, I can punch out on three and count up to five, four, five. And then I would get my answer two just by starting at the smaller number and counting up to the bigger number. I can also use my fact families to help me. I can see that these two number sentences are, are in the same fact family. I know that because they're using the same three numbers, five, two, and three. So I can write out, the, I can think of the rest of my fact family. Now there's two adding sentences that I can write using the same three numbers, and that's three plus two equals five. I can also do two plus three equals five. And then here, the other subtraction sentence that would go along with this fact family that I've just done is five take away three equals two. So if I think about my fact families, I might already know the numbers that go in those boxes because fact families are using the same three numbers each time. So you can use fact families to help you or you can use punching out and counting up to get your missing parts when you're doing a subtraction sentence. Have fun today.